Good morning. Hope you all had a good sleep last night. I know it was a long day. Uh, it was uh, kind of an activity that happened uh, to your body, mind. I'm sure it led from your mind to your hearts, and eventually it should lead from your hearts to your hands and feet. Okay, so because all of this are happening at the same time in a retreat, it's tiring. I understand that. Okay, uh, but there is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. Okay, there is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord, and we are in the presence of the Lord. What a great blessing and privilege! Privilege to worship Him. Okay, so uh, let's stand up. Oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. The Lord our great God, great of all rocks, the man of the depths of the earth, the of the earth, the sea is his, the and his hands of all the right hand. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the knees are our Lord, and we are the King of those pastures, and the sheep of His hand. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Tell of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the peoples. Praise the Lord, and bring Him to praise. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. For he comes to just the earth, and he will just the world in righteousness, and the people in his faithfulness. Praise be to God. So we're going to sing a couple of songs and uh, worship the Lord. Oh, 
Yuma Lucita. Abba Father, we thank you and come before you with praises for who you are and not for who we want you to be. The heavens are yours, the earth is yours also. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them all. You are holy and only dwell among those who are holy. There is no one righteous like you. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Yet you are so filled with love. Thank you for your steadfast love that will never leave us nor forsake us. You are so faithful that even when we are faithless and wander away in our own sinfulness, pride and hypocrisy, you draw us near by the love of your Son. Thank you for the redeeming and reconciling work of your Son on the cross. You made your Son who knew no sin, sin for us, and laid on him the iniquity of us all. We do not deserve this kind of love. But you lavish this gift upon all who come to you in childlike faith. This is so astounding. We praise you. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to teach us how to pray, convicting us the world and the world of sin. Thank you for the work of your Spirit to confirm us to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, when we see the wonders and beauty of your love, we recognize that it is only because of your gracious work that we see your beauty. We were dead in our trespasses. You have caused us to be born again. It is not by our might. It is not by our power. It is by your spirit. Yet, Lord, we sometimes hold closely to our man-made traditions. Rather than opening the scriptures to find what you have revealed, Lord, we have not submitted to your truth. Lord, we believe that our God speaks, and he primarily speaks when we open the word of God. Yet we have willingly and gladly, we have not submitted to the authority of the scriptures. Lord, forgive us. Father, your word warns that in the last days, many false teachers will come in your name. Yet we have not paid attention to the warning. We have not tested and examined the preaching that we hear in the light of your word. We have let our laziness and busyness take over our study of your word. We have the Bible in our homes, in our phones, in our own languages. There were many who died and fought to preserve the truth for us. And yet we have taken it for granted and not spending enough time in your word. Lord, forgive us. Help us to long the time with you as the deer pant for the water. Kindle a deep desire in our hearts to hear your voice by opening your word. Now, Lord, would you also forgive us that we have given into the temptation and loving the things of this world more than you. Lord, we are called to be ambassadors of this world, in this world. But yet so many times we are so busy building treasures in this world where moth and rust will eat away. We have loved ourselves. We have followed our own selfish lusts and desires. Instead of keeping money as our slave and being generous with our resources, Lord, we have loved money and allowed it to master our lives. So please forgive us whether we eat or drink Help us to honor you in everything that we do. Help us to be generous. Lord, we have not allowed the gospel to permeate the whole of our lives. Lord, we have not surrendered portions of our lives to the authority of the gospel. Lord, authority of you. Lord, today we ask that we will completely surrender all of our being into your holy hands. Lord, thank you for your word that says, that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You who began a good work in us will take us to completion. So help us to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ alone and run the race of this life with endurance. 
Lord, thank you that in Christ there is no condemnation. Yes, Help us to fight the good fight mm -hmm. by the power of your spirit. Mm -hmm. Help us to put off our old nature mm -hmm. and put on our new nature mm -hmm. as the new creation. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, we even now plead for our country. Mm -hmm. The country that we love, we all come from. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for the leaders of the nation. Mm -hmm. You have asked us to pray for the leaders. Mm -hmm. And we pray that you will transform the hearts of the leaders by the power of your gospel. And Lord, we pray that, that they, the leaders would allow the gospel to spread and to be proclaimed in a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for the promise that you are building your church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell will not prevail against them. Yes. And Lord, so please provide strength for the believers who are facing persecution. Lord, help them to stand firm mm -hmm. in your love. Help them to be filled with the joy of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we also pray that you will provide for all their needs mm -hmm. as you have promised. Mm -hmm. Lord, there are billions of people who, are, who do not know your truth right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you have called us in this generation to proclaim the reconciling work of Christ. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us to do that well in this generation, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need your strength. Mm -hmm. We need your power. And Lord, I pray for the work in the Gospel Life resource. Mm -hmm. And thank you for the labor of love for all the volunteers. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that you will bless their efforts. Mm -hmm. Lord, may, let many people come and use these resources mm -hmm. and be transferred into the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. And Lord, awaken their soul. Mm -hmm. I pray that these resources will, be, will, be, will help everyone to be anchored in the Gospel. And let them not deviate, deviate to left or to the right. Lord, we pray that there will be a great harvest for your glory, for your kingdom. And Lord, bless the gospel life resource team. Let it be gospel-centered, healthy system where everyone walks in humility and the security of the gospel. And Lord, we pray for Evian and Esther, Lord, help them to guard the good deposit that you Protect them from the snares of the evil one. Deliver all of us from evil. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we surrender our lives to your holy hands. And Lord, will you guide us? Will you lead us? In the name of our matchless King, we pray. Amen. Amen. Believe me, but if I do them, 
even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again they sought to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing at first, and there he remained. And many came to him, and they said, John did no sign. But everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. Amen. It is such an honor and joy to bring God's word to you this morning. Um, from day one of our praying and uh, planning for this retreat, uh, I was thinking to preach on beholding Christ from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 through 18. Because gospel life resources exist to help people everywhere to behold Christ. So, they turn to him in faith and repentance, be transformed into Christ's image, and bear faithful witness to him, that is Jesus Christ, in all of life. A couple of weeks ago, as I, I was preparing to preach, I felt this is not at all a good plan. You may ask why. I wrote an article on beholding Christ, and that is... Uh, already up on our website, Gospel Life TV, both in English and Tamil. So you and everyone who is watching this live stream can easily go to our website and read it later. I believe some of you, at least those who are already a part of Gospel Life Resources, might have read it. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands to see who has read and who hasn't read it yet. But if you haven't read it yet, please do read it. This is for your homework. This will help you to better understand what it means to behold Christ and what happens to someone who beholds Christ. Simply put, we become what we behold. We become what we behold. In addition to this, you will learn why we are doing what we are doing. Why does gospel life resources exist? If you are interested to become a part of gospel life resources, this is worth reading. You will get an idea about what you're going to sign up for. Okay, so you'll know how to count the cost before signing up for Gospel Life Resources. This is uh, a wonderful article. Uh, I'm not saying because I wrote. Uh, this is a study that I, that I did and uh, this is very important for our Christian discipleship. We also have a few other excellent articles on our website written by some really good people who are sitting next to you and some of them maybe are watching this live stream. I was also thinking about preaching on God's awesome holiness from Isaiah 6. But dear Akka and my Chela said you are not going to do that. You have already preached on it and also you have used a considerable portion of it in our discipleship cohorts. So she said, don't microwave your old sermon. Give us a fresh meal. Don't microwave your old sermon. 
give us a fresh meal. And she, she said it gently and lovingly. I just can't say no to it. So I asked the Lord again, what shall I preach? So I came across this marvelous passage which Divya just read so wonderfully from John's Gospel. Actually, we came across this passage in the one year praying through the Bible for your kids by Nancy Guthrie. I was struck by that. As I was reading this passage over and over again, it nourished my soul and I was fired up. And I said to myself, I'm going to preach from this passage. By the way, the one year praying through the Bible for your kids is a wonderful resource for parents. This will shape the way you parent your children because the devotions and the prayers are scripture based and gospel centered. Last night you heard its usefulness from Jesslyn and Anita and Kingsley Akam. Gospel life resources exist to provide gospel centered resources for all of life, including parenting. Well, some of you are wondering whether is he preaching or marketing. I can hear you. I am here to preach. Thanks for reminding me, okay? Shall we ask the Lord to speak to us? Father God, we thank you for your wonderful presence in our midst. We thank you for your most holy word. Your word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Open our eyes today to behold your wondrous word. Open our ears today to hear your gentle voice because your sheep hear your voice. Open our hearts to respond. All hearts are in your hands and all events at your disposal. Set the seal of your almighty will upon my ministry today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles to John chapter 10 verses 27 to 28. John chapter 10 verses 27 to 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. In these two verses, we see three distinguishing marks of the sheep. Three marks of the sheep. Number one, the sheep hear shepherd's voice. Number two, the sheep follow the shepherd. And number three, the sheep will never perish. All these marks are mutually inclusive. They are inseparable, cannot be separated. Moreover, the first mark of the sheep, that is, the sheep hear shepherd's voice, is foundational to the other two. So, we will dive deeper into the first mark and spend little time on the last two marks. Does this sound like a plan? Yes. First, the sheep hear shepherd's voice. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. This is from ESV. If you follow NIV or NLT, you will read, my sheep listen to my voice. My sheep listen to my voice. Who is saying this? The one who said, I am the good shepherd, in verse 11, says, my sheep listen to my voice. Jesus, the good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, 20, you will read Jesus as the great shepherd. The good and the great shepherd 
Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. To whom does Jesus say, my sheep listen to my voice? To the Jews who gathered around him, around Jesus. To the Jews who gathered around him. That is John chapter 10 verse 20. What's going on here? The Jews were celebrating the feast of celebration. Sorry, the dedication. The feast of dedication. You won't read about that in the Mosaic law in Leviticus or in Numbers. Why? Because this was introduced during the intertestamental period. A period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Between Malachi and John the Baptist. During the time, there was no word from God. It was a dark period in human history. What you see here is the consequence of the absence of the word of God. The Jews have created something new, their own new creative version of religion. Take this to your minds and hearts. As David says, store up this in your heart. Are you ready for this? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's job today is not to teach you new fancy things or new supernatural ways of connecting with God or new ways of worship. Don't deceive others or be deceived. Let me repeat. The Holy Spirit's job today is not to teach new, new, fancy or new supernatural ways of connecting with God or new ways of worship. The Holy Spirit's job is to teach you all things. Note here, all things. It's not all plus things there is no addition. There is no all minus things. There is no subtraction from this word. The Holy Spirit's job is to teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all that Jesus has said. Notice here what Jesus says already said that is the Holy Spirit's job. Where do we now have all that Jesus has said? In the Bible. In the Bible. What will happen to you if there is no word of God in your life? There is a clue in this passage. You will be open to creating something on your own or you'll be open to someone else's new and novel idea. The Jews introduced a new feast, a feast of dedication, which is not in the first five books of the Bible. If you are interested in history, this is for you. In 167 BC, the Syrian king Antiochus Epiphanes occupied the Jerusalem temple, set up a pagan altar, and slaughtered pigs in the temple, which is an abomination to the Lord. In 164 BC, three years later, the Jews recaptured the temple under the leadership of Judas Maccabeus and rededicated the temple. This was much more than a religious liberation or deliverance. It was national liberation. Then the Jews started to celebrate the feast of dedication every year remembering 
the rededication of the temple year after year during winter. In today's passage, we read this in verse 22. The feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem and it was winter. Here, the Jews are not celebrating the feast of dedication, remembering the rededication of the temple. They are celebrating the feast of dedication, looking forward to another national liberation, another national freedom and independence from the Roman Empire. They are looking for Messiah in the form of a political king who will overthrow the Roman regime. Now, Jesus, the Messiah, has come. Verse 23 is walking in the temple, in the colony of Solomon, in Solomon's portico or porch. As Jesus was walking in the temple, the Jews gathered around him and passed him. Verse 24, how long will you keep us in suspense? How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. In other words, tell us with boldness, who are you? Listen, they are not asking this question to believe in Christ. They are not asking this question to believe in Christ. They are asking this question to find reasons to kill him. They are not asking this question to lay prostrate face down before Christ or falling on their face before God and worshiping. By the way, laying prostrate before God or laying face down before God is an act of, in an act of worship, is biblical. Let me say it again. By the way, laying prostrate before God or laying face down before God in an act of worship is biblical. Falling backward is not biblical. Falling backward is not biblical. In the Bible, we read only enemies of God fall backward. You see, this kind of practice among so-called so -called Christians today, this is a wonderful example of how we create our own way of worship which is not biblical because of no or less regard for the word of God. The Jews gather around Jesus and ask him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. It is easy to answer questions about our faith to someone who is looking for answers. It is easy to answer questions, not one question, it could be even questions, two or three, or even more about our faith to someone who is looking for answers. But it is not easy to answer someone who is looking for more questions for every answer of yours. Did you get it? It is not easy to answer someone who is looking for more questions for every answer of yours. You are trying to answer their question. As you are trying to answer the question, they are trying to come up with another question in their mind. They are not willing to listen to you. Verses 25 through 27. Jesus answered to such Jews, I told you and you do not believe. The words that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe me because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. Twice 
Jesus says, you do not believe. The first time Jesus said, I told you, I told you, you do not believe. The second time Jesus said, the works that I do bear witness about me, but you do not believe. Jesus' words, or in other words, teachings, and his works, his deeds, both his word and deed, testify who he is, testify his identity, but still they do not believe in Jesus. The same is true even today. God has revealed himself in all of his creation. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims his handiwork. If you don't believe this, then you should ask Sam who's sitting here. Their friends hoop Sam up to a telescope and now almost every day Sam and his family, they are looking at the sky not for Jesus' return but looking at the galaxies, the stars, the planets and they are awestruck and overwhelmed by God's creation and telling everyone about God's wonderful creation. What else do people need to believe in God? In addition to revealing himself in creation, God has revealed himself in the Son Jesus Christ, which is the crown of his revelation. God has revealed himself also in his word. So, you and I have no excuse for knowing God and believing in Him. You and I have no excuse for knowing God and believing in Him. The problem is not a failure on the part of Jesus to tell them clearly. The problem is a failure on the part of the people. They did not believe because they were spiritually deaf. They could not hear his words. And they were spiritually blind. They could not see his deeds. You may ask me, why then did Jesus say, you are not among the sheep? Or in other words, among the chosen ones. Glad you are thinking about this. The Jews are God's chosen people, including the Jews who gathered around Jesus and the Jews who were trying to trap them up with questions. Turn to Deuteronomy 14.2. Deuteronomy 14.2. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord has chosen you. Here, you refers to the entire Israel community. Okay, the entire Israel community. For you are a people only to the Lord your God. The Lord has chosen you. Why? To be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples. But in Exodus 19.5, we read, If you will indeed obey my voice or hear my voice or listen to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples. Do you see there is a tension here between the Israelites being his sheep already and becoming his, his sheep or chosen ones only if they listen to his voice and obey his voice? I think it is good to have a balanced approach and maintain the tension between these two. Between God saying us that you are a chosen one and you are the sheep and we becoming his sheep or chosen ones. Jesus maintained the tension well. Jesus never said, listen, Jesus never said you are not among the sheep so get lost or go away from me. He said, my sheep hear my voice. 
And in a few verses below, even when the Jews is chosen, the sheep, his sheep, picked up stones again. This is not the first time to stone him. When they picked up stones again, Jesus continues to give an invitation. Jesus continues to give an invitation. Verses 37 to 38. If I'm not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. Jesus is giving an opportunity to know him and understand him so that they can hear him. Therefore, listen, therefore, the emphasis should be on my sheep hear my voice and not on you are not among the sheep. Never come to a conclusion that someone is not an elect or chosen because of their unbelief. It could be your parents or it could be your siblings or it could be your own children or your friends or your co-workers. Never come to a conclusion saying that that person or this person is not an elect, not his chosen ones based on their current unbelief. Look at another verse in John 10, 16. Jesus says, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Okay. Already he is considering some as his sheep. And here, do you see his heart? I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. That they will listen to my voice. Here, Jesus is referring to the Gentiles as other sheep. You see how Jesus is after bringing other people, sheep, the lost people, because he's confident that they will listen to his voice. The sheep hear shepherd's voice. This is the first and the foundational mark of a true sheep. Do you hear his voice? First of all, let me ask you, do you believe in him? You are not a Christian because you were born in a Christian home or you go to your local church every Sunday. Let me repeat. You are not a Christian because you were born in a Christian home or you go to your local church every Sunday. If this was true, the Jews who gathered around Jesus would have heard his voice. They were born to a Jewish family. They just celebrated the Feast of Tabernacle two months ago and are now busy celebrating another feast, the Feast of Dedication, which they made up and are found nowhere in the scripture. And where do you see them? In the temple. You are a Christian because you have realized you are a sinner and you need a savior and have turned to Jesus Christ in true repentance, believing that Jesus died for your sins. Has there been a time in your life when you realized you are a sinner and turned to Christ? If your answer is no, would you consider turning to Christ right now? As you are listening to this, I bet you would never, never regret of making this important decision. If your answer is yes, you have made the best decision ever in your life. But your Christian life never ends there. You will continue to hear his voice. Beware. There are thieves 
robbers, strangers, wolves, hired hands, those who care nothing for the sheep, they are of everywhere these days. As Job prayed, he prayed really well. He prayed the word. Did you notice? I don't know how many of you fall. He prayed the word. And uh, we sang the word. We are try trying to just give you a sample of how to sing the word and pray the word and preach the word and participating in the word which became incarnated and became flesh. There are thieves, robbers, strangers. I'm not making up this. If you read John chapter 10, you read this. Okay? You, you are able to see all these folks, thieves, robbers, strangers, wolves, iron hands, those who care nothing for the sheep. They are out everywhere. Don't listen to them. Don't entertain them. Don't listen to them. Don't entertain them. First, the sheep hear the shepherd's voice. Second, the sheep follow the shepherd. The sheep follow the shepherd. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. While the text here says, I know them and they follow me, verse 3 in the same chapter unpacks the kind of knowing that is worth looking at. Verse 3 The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. The shepherd calls his own sheep by name. Isn't this beautiful? He calls me Abby. He calls Judas Jude. He calls Divya as Divya. He calls Charles and Charles as Charles and Charles. It is one thing to be called by our names by someone. Okay, It is one thing to be called by our names by someone. And it's completely a different thing to be called by the one who owns us. The one who created us. The one who owns us calls each and every one of us by our names. The sheep hear shepherd's voice. And the shepherd calls a sheep by name, by name, the sheep follow the shepherd. The sheep follow the shepherd. Do you see how the sheep gravitate to the shepherd? There is a strong inclination to the shepherd. There is a pull, gravitational pull towards the shepherd. There is an irresistible attraction to the shepherd. The sheep couldn't resist, but just follow the shepherd. The sheep couldn't resist, but just follow the shepherd. John chapter 1 illustrates this kind of following so well. John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples. With John the Baptist's disciples. One of them is Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. When John the Baptist looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Just listen. Behold the Lamb of God. Andrew and the other disciple of John the Baptist heard this and they followed Jesus. They just followed. Without any second thought. Then... Andrew introduced this Jesus to his brother, that is Peter. And Peter just followed Jesus. Do you have this kind of gravitation to Jesus? 
Who are you gravitated to? Is Jesus your gravitation? Is Jesus your attraction? Do you have a longing and desire for this person, Jesus, who died for our sins? During Jesus' earthly ministry, a large crowd followed him. Jesus feeds the 5,000 with bread and fish. Everyone was full. When Jesus said, I am the bread of life, Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Many of the disciples, not a few, not some, many of his disciples, not only said, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it? They turned back and no longer walked with him. They literally said goodbye to Jesus and left him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The words of eternal life. All who receive the bread and the fish, they ate to their satisfaction. They were full and said, by Jesus, when he talked about real stuff. But the twelve disciples, especially Simon Peter, answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Jesus has the words of eternal life. Therefore, the sheep follows the shepherd. Do you have this kind of gravitation to Jesus' words of eternal life? What are you gravitated to? Is Jesus' words your attraction? Do you have hunger and thirst for God's words of eternal life? If you are gravitated to Jesus, and his words of eternal life, you will be seeking him as the first thing when you get up from your bed, instead of seeking black. You can fill in the black with what you are seeking after. Let me repeat it. If you are gravitated to Jesus and his words of eternal life, you will be seeking him, seeking his words, as the first thing when you get up from your bed instead of seeking black. You can fill in the blank with what or who you are seeking after. Andrew Bonner, a 19th century minister of the first free church in, free church in Scotland, uh, where Pastor Collins comes from, wrote in his diary like this. Let me read this. By the grace of God and the strength of the Holy Spirit, not by his own strength, by the grace of God and the strength of the Holy Spirit, I desire to lay down a rule. This is 19th century. Okay? A rule. Not to speak to man or woman until I have spoken with God. Okay? I desire to lay down a rule not to speak with man until I have spoken with God, not to do anything with my hand till I have been upon my knees, not to read letters or papers in the 19th century. You know what it is now, right? Not to read black until I have read something of the Holy Scriptures. The sheep follow the shepherd. You have words of eternal life. I'm not there yet, but I can also say by the grace of God and the strength of the Holy Spirit, I'm making a good progress. What's your rule of life? Do you have any rule in your life? Any discipline 
of having a regular devotion? Let me ask this. When was the last time you prayed to God? I'm not asking, saying the grace before the meals, or saying the prayers in the church, or praying with your family. The question is, when was the last time you prayed to God? Do you have a personal prayer time? When was the time? When was the last time you read Jesus' words of eternal life? I'm not asking about hearing God's word in a meeting like this or in a retreat like this or in your church or having some, some, someone speaking to you, a known, unknown person. Do you personally read the word of God? When we open God's word, we hear Him speak. When we open God's word, we hear Him speak. And what's next? We follow Him. While many disciples turned back and no longer walked with Jesus, Andrew, Peter, and as per Peter's usage of the plural pronoun, we, the other ten disciples also followed Jesus because Jesus has the words of eternal life. The sheep hear shepherd's voice. The sheep follow the shepherd. Finally, the sheep will never perish. The sheep will never perish. Look at verse 28. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. Isn't this an encouragement to all of us? No one, no one will snatch them out of his hand. We will never perish and no one will snatch us out of his hand. He has taken hold of us, listen, he has taken hold of us through his nail-pierced hand. Do you think you would allow someone to snatch us out of his nail-pierced hands? Do you know Satan, the thief, who steals the joy and peace from us, the thief who kills us, and the thief who destroys us with shame and guilt is accusing us day and night before God. 24-7, 365 days, he is accusing us before God. But Jesus, the good and the great shepherd, who laid down his life for us, is pleading and interceding for us day and night before God. Satan is accusing us before God of our past sins, of our present failures, day and night. You bought him by giving your life as an answer. See, what's happening? But, are we dear Lord Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us, is pleading and interceding for us day and night before God. I cannot trust my good works, but I can certainly trust in Jesus' good work, his finished work on the cross. I cannot trust in my prayer, but I can certainly trust in the unfinished prayers of Jesus Christ, who is seated at the right hand of Father in heaven. Do you have the same confidence or assurance that you are his sheep? Do you have that kind of confidence and assurance that you hear his voice? Do you have that confidence and assurance that you follow him and you will never perish? I want your answer to be yes to all these questions. Yes, I am a sheep. Yes, I hear his voice. Yes, I follow him. Yes, I will never perish. 
if the answer is maybe, I'm not sure, or if your answer is no, please talk to us before you leave this retreat. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you Lord for your son Jesus Christ and we have this words of eternal life. Thank you Jesus. Lord, we are your chosen ones, sheep. Lord, help us to hear your voice, not to just be dependent on a day or a minute, sometime in a week or sometime in a month or sometime only a few days in the new year when we make some resolution. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to follow you and help us to be assured that we will not perish. Help us not to trust in our works, but help us to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Help us not to trust in our own prayers, weak and humble prayers. Help us to trust in the unfinished prayers of Jesus Christ on our behalf, in the presence of the Father in heaven, pleading and interceding for us. Help us to be assured with such kind of uh, assurance of God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Help us to respond. In Jesus' name I pray. So let's sing uh, the song, He Will Hold Me Fast. I don't know how many of you uh, sang that song, uh, having understood that, but here's an opportunity for that. Okay, uh, so this song uh, speaks uh, as we just heard him speak to us, right? So he will hold us fast. So let's stand up and worship the Lord by singing this song. Oh, 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 oh,
justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast, raised with him to endless life. He will hold me fast till our faith is touched to sight. When he comes in How very good and blessed it is when people of God live together in unity. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Be present, be present, Jesus, you good high priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and made yourself known to them. Make yourself known to us in the breaking of the Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-29 The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so, eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. You come to this table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table. But you are the same God whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious God, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We most humbly ask you, O merciful God, to sanctify with your Holy Spirit us and these own gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may all attain to the unity of the faith and may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, even Christ our Lord, by whom and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours. Amen.
So I think you all have a, uh, the wafer and the juice, right? So what are we going to do is first let's open uh, the first uh, layer, uh, the wafer. So and let's uh, partake at the same time. Okay, uh, let's wait for everyone to open, and in the same way, let's brown the juice as well. This is the body of Christ, broken for you, taken and eat. Let's open the next layer. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Take it and drink. Let's sing this prayer together. Glorious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life. And renew us for your service. Help us to share Christ's body and receive his cup to be his faithful disciple so that our daily living may be part of the life of the kingdom and our love be your love reaching out into the life of the world. Amen. Let's sing this song. When they kiss the Raja. Oh, 
May the God of peace, who brought you again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace.